Hi, I'm Heidi Hope. Welcome to the She's Gone Free podcast, a show where I share my story as a creative entrepreneur and mother, my journey to a full heart, my often messy ADHD brain, and the stories, hearts, and minds of other incredible women who have healed, found joy, and stepped into their greatness to live a life on fire with purpose. You have found this podcast because you are ready to walk this path too, and I'm so glad that you're here. Promise me you'll never again settle for anything less than fire, that which lights you up and burns away everything that is no longer meant for you. Fire transforms, and it sets you free. All right, let's talk about my love for my meditation practice and why you should start a meditation practice too. First of all, meditation is super easy to do and it can be done anywhere and it doesn't take a lot of time to have really great effects. So this is something you can start implementing into your life today and start seeing measurable results really soon. Now, a lot of people say to me like, oh, I'm too busy to meditate, I don't have the time, or I just can't sit still that long, I feel like I'm crawling out of my skin, or um, my mornings are so hectic, or my evenings are so hectic, and I've got so much to do with the kids, and that I just can't carve out that time to get away from it all. First of all, I totally understand you. I, when I first started meditating, I have a very like ADHD active brain. It's always running a million miles an hour, my brain runs marathons <laughs> um, and it's very hard for me to find stillness. So when I first started a meditation practice, I actually found meditation through yoga. So at the end of every yoga class, you have to lay down in Shavasana pose. And I used to be crawling out of my skin, laying down and trying to be quiet because I was at the gym for a workout. I was not there to meditate and I needed to be doing something. I needed to be burning calories or if I wasn't, I had a hundred other things to do and to accomplish. Um, so laying down and finding stillness for just five minutes felt like such a waste of time. Not to mention my body was rebelling against sitting still. You know, I would always have an itch to scratch or like I just couldn't lay in peace. I have been able to cultivate that now through my meditation practice. So I look back at my college self who was laying there in yoga class and unable to sit still and I have a good laugh. Your brain is completely trainable. So what meditation does is it retrains your brain. It rewires your brain, quite literally. Practicing meditation has been shown to form new neural pathways in your brain when you repeat something over and over again, new connections are formed. So if you're somebody who's easily distracted or you get very overwhelmed, or you're super busy or you get burnt out very often or you experience anxiety or depression, Meditation is a tool that you can use to practice more calm, to ease your anxiety, to practice mindfulness, and it's, it's super simple to do and it's available to everybody and you can do it anywhere. Another really cool thing about meditation is that you access different brain waves than you typically do in your everyday life. And so it pulls you out of the fight or flight kind of response to modern everyday living. And it brings you into a more calm space where you have heart and brain coherence and it triggers brain waves that help you become more creative, more open to new ideas, more receptive, um, more restful, more healing. So let's talk a little bit about some of the benefits of meditation and why I try to get everybody I know to at least set aside a small, you only need a teeny bit of time to start a meditation practice. Okay. So one thing meditation does is it improves your quality of sleep. It actually shortens the amount of time that it takes you to fall asleep and it helps you get deeper and more restorative sleep. Even in the act of meditation, meditation itself is very restorative and you can trigger brain waves that are similar to when you have 
REM sleep, which is your deepest, most restorative sleep. So that can actually happen during meditation, but then you carry it into your sleep at night and um, your brain is more, is it's easier for it to get into those patterns of very restorative brain waves. Meditation has also been scientifically proven to reduce stress and anxiety. And because it reduces stress and anxiety, it also reduces any type of physical ailments or pain or illnesses that are caused by stress. Many forms of meditation have been proven to also reduce depression, to increase elevated emotions, to increase feel-good emotions, to release feel-good hormones and chemicals in the brain. Um, and when you start to release those feel-good hormones, it's kind of like your own little pharmaceutical company up there. If you can trigger the release of those feel-good hormones and make you feel more good more often. Meditation can help reduce pain. Yep, it's pretty crazy that what we do in our brain can really affect our physical body so much, but it's true. Your perception of pain is shown to be connected to your mental state. And if you are feeling a lot of anxiety or stress, that can make pain worse. And if you are feeling calm and relaxed, that can help reduce your pain symptoms. This is kind of cool. So one review of 38 studies concluded that mindfulness meditation could reduce pain, improve quality of life, and decrease symptoms of depression in people who had chronic pain. So see how these things are all tied together to our state of mind? Meditation also cultivates creativity and problem solving skills. I do feel so much more creative and I get into flow state more easily and I'm able to um, kind of problem solve so much better when my I, I'm sticking with my regular meditation practice. Meditation also lengthens attention span and focus and clarity. So if you're somebody who has a lot of brain fog or you're easily distracted or you um, get lost scrolling through social media or you forget where your keys are all the time, it can help, meditation can help you with all of those types of busy brain symptoms. Even meditating for just a tiny amount every single day can benefit you. A lot of studies have shown that meditating for just 10 to 15 minutes a day um, enhanced attention and memory. Another review concluded that meditation may even reverse patterns in the brain that contribute to mind wandering, worry, and poor attention. We live in a culture where our attention is constantly being pulled from us. It is constantly being, dist we're just so easily distracted by technology and social media and our phones. And it's like, things are just always grabbing for our attention outside of if you're a mom and you have kids or you have a busy job, all those things grab your attention too. And so we can become extremely scatterbrained and also very, very burnt out when our attention is constantly being pulled away from what we need to actually get done. Another cool thing about meditation, it can reduce age-related memory loss and increase mental clarity. Meditation also increases feel-good emotions, feel-good emotions, and those feel-good emotions trigger feel-good chemicals and feel-good hormones within your body. So you're just feeling more calm, more joyful, more enthusiastic about life, like uplifted and inspired more often when you have a regular meditation practice in place. Meditation can also help fight addictions because it can manage your impulses and it can redirect any unhealthy habits that you have. Meditation reduces blood pressure. Well, of course, because it reduces stress, right? But it decreases, your blood pressure decreases not just during meditation, but all day long, your blood pressure can be lowered. So it has lasting effects. Actually, all of these effects that we're talking about, they don't just happen while you're meditating. They happen throughout the day and you start to you really start to rewire your brain so that it works in a different way and when you're thinking and feeling in a different way your body begins to respond to these new thoughts and emotions that are constantly going on in them okay so there's two main types of meditation that we're going to talk about the first is focused attention meditation so this style concentrates attention on a single object thought sound or visualization it emphasizes ridding your mind of distractions. The meditation may focus on breathing, a mantra, or a calming sound. So this is where we're really focusing our attention. We're trying to keep bringing our attention back to something. Our breath, a mantra, which is just a word you repeat over and over again, or an affirmation, or it may be a guided visualization. So it's really we're trying to train our brain to continue to return to 
focused attention on something. The second type is open monitoring meditation. So this style encourages broadening your awareness of all aspects of your environment, train of thought, and sense of self. It may include becoming aware of suppressed thoughts, feelings, or impulses. So open monitoring meditation is really being more receptive and it's 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 really creating space. It's creating space for ideas to come in. It's creating space to watch your thoughts. Um, so this might be more like listening to music and kind of emptying the mind of, ever, of the busyness and then seeing what comes through and just kind of being the witness. It really is this presence and this being the witness rather than um, focused meditation, which is really trying to uh, repeatedly focus, bring attention and focus to something. Okay, uh, the next easiest type of meditation is just to do breath work. So this is just deep breathing and focusing on your breath. So this would be more of a focused attention meditation. Anytime that your mind starts wandering, you bring your attention back to your breath, your inhale and your exhale. Then there's mantras. So this is another type of focused attention meditation. This is where we have a word or a sound like um that we are repeating over and over again. This helps train our brain to focus on one thing. Um, and when our mind starts wandering, we just bring it back to that mantra. We just bring it, we catch it and we bring it back to the mantra and the repetition. Another type of meditation is a guided meditation. And, it, and you can find a lot of these online. I even record these now for people who are in my coaching program. Um, so guided meditations are just when somebody leads you through focusing on different areas like a body scan or uh, visualizing something. But it's really just having someone as a guide and there might be music in the background or it might just be silent, but they're really leading you through. If you have a very busy brain that's very distractible, guided meditations are a great way to start because you have somebody kind of leading you through what to pay attention to in the meditation rather than just having the open space for your mind to run around crazy. Prayer is a form of meditation too. So if you are somebody who prays regularly, having some silent time built into your prayer could be a form of meditation for you. Listening to music. So there are all sorts of um, like meditation and healing sounds that you can just play while you quietly breathe and do any of these other things. So uh, one thing I love to use is called solfeggio frequencies. So, and I'll put the spelling of that down in the um, comment section below, but these are healing frequencies or you can look up Reiki healing frequencies, but sound has been proven to have beneficial effects on the expression of cells within the body. So listening to these different frequencies can have a very calming effect on your nervous system um, and can trigger different brave brain waves too. So there's different frequencies for creativity, there's frequencies for healing um, because of whatever brain waves they those sounds trigger within you. You can do a moving meditation, so like yoga or Tai Chi, or there's walking meditations. You can go right on YouTube and just like look up different meditations and there's tons of free stuff out there. I don't know, you know, what's good, what's bad, but, um, but there's plenty of free resources that you can start to get into and you can see what you like the best because we're all different. So what's going to make you feel comfortable and happy sitting for um, five, 10, 15 minutes might be different from somebody else. We we all learn in different ways and we all find peace in different ways. Another thing you can do is chakra clearing. So chakras are our energy centers, they're energetic centers within our body. And um, a chakra clearing meditation would focus on different chakras and trying to just clean the energy in that area. A uh, grounding meditation is where we ground and connect to the earth. This can be done, ideally this is done outdoors when you're barefoot. This is changing the energy of your body. Um, you may have heard of grounding before. I could do a whole episode just on, on grounding. But um, it allows you to rebalance your energy and to connect to nature and the earth. So basically we are around, um, everything is made out of energy and we're around a lot of things that change our energy, especially technology. So if you're somebody who's around technology a lot or when you're up in an airplane that really changes your energy, um, 
grounding can help you feel balanced and centered again. So you can ground by walking around barefoot. You can also ground through meditation processes that really bring your energy back down because our energy gets stuck like up in our heads. So it allows you to bring your energy back down into your body. Another type of meditation I like to do often is just visualization. So this is closing your eyes and having a vision for the future, having a vision for how you wanna feel, um, and, and then actually feeling those emotions while you're meditating. It's a really, really powerful way to change your reality. All right, so a lot of people say, what if I can't sit still? Um, if you can't sit still, try a walking meditation, try a moving meditation first. Uh, you only need to start with five minutes because it's like a muscle. So you're gonna train your brain to, to be able to last through meditation longer and longer. I was the woman who could not sit still at the end of yoga class. I was crawling out of my skin and I could sit over an hour in meditation right now if it's a guided meditation. Um, I do recommend guided meditations if you have a busy brain because it gives your brain something to focus on. It's that focused attention. Uh, I find that really helpful personally. Find music that you like. There's always, everybody has a connection to music and some type of music that inspires them or ups, uplifts them or makes them feel good or happy. So find some music that you like. Meditation is not about like sitting in a cave by yourself, uh, just in the silence and finding nirvana. Meditation really is about training your brain to be able to enter into the chaos, to be able to enter into the challenges. You have a super busy morning that you feel like you don't have time to meditate. Meditation trains your brain so that you can be in your busy morning, be in the chaos, be in the giant to-do list and feel peace and feel calm and feel joy. So if you're not meditating yet and you don't feel peace and calm and joy in your busyness, then give it a try. See if you can start changing your brain so that you can bring that sense of joy into every single thing that you do. So where would you find some good guided meditations or meditation music? You can look on YouTube, lots of meditations there. Um, look on Spotify, you can look for the, that's where I listen to the Solfregio frequencies. So I'll put those in the um, notes in the comment section. Uh, you can go on Pandora and look for them. You can look for podcasts. There are po whole podcasts just devoted to meditation. So just the, the podcast itself is a guided meditation. Maybe I'll do one of those for you guys, actually. I actually have a guided meditation, which is the Dream Life Visualization. So this is a visualization meditation with eyes closed. Um, that is a freebie for you, that's right on my site. So I'll put the link to that also in the comment section. If you haven't done that activity yet, it's really fun. You should do it a couple times a year, but it's really envisioning the future that you want for yourself and spending time feeling elevated emotions, which will draw that experience to you. You can find a teacher you love. Uh, a lot of mindfulness teachers, a lot of life coaches, a lot of people who doing what I'm doing have free meditations and also you can buy meditations or you can sign up for coaching programs like mine and we go through this process with somebody actually holding your hand. And there's no shortage of teachers out there. You really wanna find somebody who just like resonates with you, who gets you, who maybe has been through some of the same stuff that you have been through um, and you just feel inspired after working with them, listening to them. Um, so that's something I really encourage you to do. And oftentimes they also have communities of other people like you, similar mindset, um, who, and then you can find, you know, a lot of friends and people online in the community around some of these ideas and topics. There are actually a lot of Facebook groups devoted to this type of stuff. So that's a place that I'm able to find community of you know people who are doing the same type of work. And it's very inspiring once you start to see their results, when people are healing, when they're manifesting, when they're changing their life through something so simple as like sitting still for 10 minutes a day can accomplish so much. You know, you think like, I don't have time for that. But meditation actually like opens time up for you because you're less stressed, you're more productive, you're more focused, you have more mental clarity, you're more creative, right? And so now you need less hours in the day to get done what you need to get done and there's actually more time left over to do this type of work and more creative work. You can also record your own meditation. So this is, I just started doing this, but it's really easy to just record video and detach the audio. Um, 
or you can voice record on your own phone and you can lead yourself through meditations. That's really powerful. And then finally, there's a ton of apps out there. It just put meditation into your the app section on your phone and you'll find some paid apps, some free apps. There's lots of stuff. Headspace is a good one. Calm is a good one. Um, Synced Tuition is a good one. I will put all these names in the notes in um, down near the comment section. But there are quite a few good ones to check out, um, both free and paid. And it's you don't have to spend money on meditation, although I really enjoy new ones because my brain does get bored very easily. So I like always having new, fresh, different meditations and to kind of see how they affect me. And as you continue to practice, it gets more and more powerful because like I said, it's a muscle. So you keep stretching that muscle, the muscle gets stronger. Then you're able to really in your life walk into the chaos, walk into the busyness, walk into, you know, busy season, walk into when you would normally feel burnt out and you now have trained your brain to remain feeling positive and optimistic. You know how to trigger feel good hormones. You know how to trigger elevated emotions. Um, you know how to get re-inspired. You can always bring yourself back because now it's like second nature to you because you've worked that muscle so often. So if you haven't started a meditation practice yet, just start with five minutes a day. That's all you need to get started and start to form a habit. Get, here's a challenge for you. For the next 30 days, set aside five minutes a day. It doesn't even have to be the same time every day. If you have a really busy morning and you forget it, maybe at lunch break you can do five minutes. Maybe when you get home from work you can do five minutes. Maybe right before sleep you can do five minutes. After you spend a month doing five minutes, you're going to start to crave more because it, your body craves it. The, these, the chemicals that are released in your brain, the feel-good chemicals, they're addictive by nature. So your body is going to crave more and more and you're going to notice if you skip a few days. So start with the five minutes and then gradually increase from there to 10 minutes to 15 minutes or more. But, but proven benefits start at usually 10 to 15 minutes a day. You can start seeing all of these proven benefits that I've talked about in today's episode. And then as you grow more and more, some of the more profound like healing meditations and stuff, those may go up to an hour or so if you have that amount of time or you have a real challenge that you're working through, you can do longer periods of time. That's not what's necessary to start seeing change. What's necessary to start seeing change is 10 to 15 minutes a day. So promise me you'll get started. And I wanna know in the comments section, let me know below if you meditate, how often you meditate, how long you meditate for, if you've tried any of these meditation techniques and what type of meditation you love and works for you. And you know it would be even cooler if you have some success stories, like have you seen changes from doing this work? I'd love to hear about it. Meditation for me personally, it's been a life changer, a total game changer. It has upped my creativity. It has definitely reduced any symptoms of ADHD that I used to have. It's increased my focus. I honestly, I think it's what connects us to our genius. So my ideas that have built million dollar businesses, my ideas that Ha, you know, grow my audience, all of those things, I, I get those through the receptive process of meditation. This is when we are in touch with a greater mind, something greater than ourselves comes through and we find our best creativity, our most innovative ideas, our real genius. Yes, you have a little genius inside too. Meditation is a practice that allows you to tap into that on a daily basis. So what are you waiting for? If you like today's episode, subscribe to the channel and share it to inspire somebody else today. You can rate and review the podcast so it reaches more ears. And of course, I always love your comments. Follow me on your favorite social media platform at Heidi Hope, Photographer Rising, and She's Gone Free. Or visit HeidiHope.com to get on my insider list and hear about upcoming coaching and online learning opportunities. Thanks for listening. I'm so grateful for you.